Hello, uh, Facebook friends and family. Uh, just want to give you an update on how things are going. Uh, first, I'd like to clear the air about a few things. Uh, number one, I'm still a Christian. Number two, I'm still living holy. And number three, I'm always doing ministry. Okay, maybe I'm not street preaching, going out on the, on the, on the street preaching, but I'm always preaching, and I'm always... Uh, I'm always telling people, you know, about Jesus. If they come to me with questions, I answer them. Everybody that I work with knows what I believe. Everybody in my family knows what I believe. All of my friends know what I believe. And people I will run into in the future will know what I believe. That's just something I'm always doing. I'm, I'm, I'm an evangelist. I'm here to just, you know, get people to Jesus Christ. And, you know, whatever form that takes. Now, of course, I'm not currently street preaching. But that doesn't mean I'm never going to street preach again. God was very clear that he does not want me to get rid of my street preaching gear. So, like I say, it might be in storage, storage for a while, but that doesn't mean that I'm never going to use it again in the future. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure I am going to go back to street preaching. You know, after I do... You know, well, actually, I want to do the triple crown, but you know, I'm doing, I'm going to do the um, AT first, and then you know, we'll go from there. But at some point in the future, I'm probably going to street preach again. So I just wanted to clear the air about that. Um, basically, uh, I got a three-year plan I'm going to do with the training and the uh, and the you know, getting the capital, the money to actually do uh, these hikes. So, um, <clears throat> I actually found out, you know, I was looking to early retirement. I actually found out right now I'm eligible to retire early. But there's a few mitigating factors, so I'm going to put it on a three-year plan. So, hopefully, Lord willing, on March 20th, 2025, I will be starting the AT. That's the plan for right now. And um, like I said, we'll get into a few factors first. In fact, that's what I want to go into right now is, um, you know, there are what I'll call challenges to uh, doing the AT. You know, I'm not exactly a spring chicken. And there are some issues that I have that I'm going to need to overcome to be able to do the AT. Uh, number one is allergies. I do have a number of allergies. This is not my favorite time of the year. So, so you know, that's something I got to deal with, you know, starting in Georgia and going all the way up to Maine and starting towards the end of March. So that's something I got to, you know, I got to put into account. Um, I am getting treatment for it. I am on shots. And that's the reason I'm on the three-year plan. I have three more years of allergy shots to take. So hopefully I can work it to where as soon as I'm done with the allergy shots, then I'm going on the AT. Because there won't be a better time for me to be, you know, as far as um, relief from the allergies. That will be the best time. It's right when I'm done uh, with the uh, shot therapy. So that's another reason for the three-year plan. Um, I have asthma. And which I believe is very closely tied to the allergies because I've noticed, you know, when I'm treating the allergies, you know, with the shots, my asthma has been improving. In fact, I don't take any regular med medication for, the, for asthma. And my inhaler, which I do carry, is collecting dust. I hardly ever use it. And this is only after two years of shot therapy, so I'm pretty sure um, at the at the end of the three years, you know, the allergies won't be as much of a problem, and the asthma will not be as much of a problem. Um, in the past, I've had high blood pressure that could be an issue, but um, I have I have it checked um, with my doctor. In fact, the last time I had my blood pressure uh, checked with the doctor, I mean it was not just normal, it was healthy. So, 
I may have had high blood pressure in the past, but I, it's not really an issue right now, and I don't think it'll be one in the future. Uh, particularly with you know the active lifestyle I'm doing and the diet I'm doing. I'm on the keto diet. Um, I'm also pre-diabetic, and like I say, this is probably not going to be an issue in the future. I mean, uh, like I say, you know, with diet and exercise, you know, I'm not I'm not at the point of testing my blood sugar. Uh, testing my blood sugar. I don't think I ever will be. I don't think I'll ever need medication or take insulin. I just don't see that in my future. Um, <clears throat> when I got diagnosed as being pre-diabetic, I mean, I was starting off breakfast with a can of Coke, and I remember um, carrying this candy with me on my route. You know, that, look, that good sugar rush, you know, helps keep you awake, you know, when you're doing those long drives uh, of just, uh, you know, um, delivering mail. So I don't think that's going to be an issue anymore. So those are my challenges, and like I say, I think, uh, you know, I'm going I'm to get those uh, resolved or even to the point where they're not even issues at all. Now, as far as hiking went today, um, I did go hiking today. I did another five mile. Um, the big difference today is I use a trekking pole, and uh, this is something that a lot of hikers use. Um, one thing... It helps with like stability. Um, also, when you're carrying uh, a backpack, you know, with um, a good amount of weight to it, this will help um, sort of alleviate the amount of weight that's going on. You know, it sort of distributes the weight evenly. I did notice though. I did use I did use one pole today, not both of them. Um, I, I saw in a video that. You know, just getting started, you might want to use one pole and then go to two poles. So I went with just one pole today. And I got to say, it was very easy. It was easier to do the steady pace that I, that, you know, that I set for myself using a trekking pole. Particularly with the inclines and the declines, I mean, it was, it was much easier to do because I had the trekking pole. So I think this is going to be a stay. You know, in the future, I think uh, I'm gonna keep using the the trekking poles, and you know, other gear. As I get it, you know, I'm gonna start incorporating it. Um, of course, eventually, I want to get to a point to where I'm actually carrying a backpack and doing the miles that way. Uh, I did get order a uh, hydration pack, and uh, those of you who don't know, that's that's sort of like the backpack that you wear. That's got the water in it. And, you know, you can just uh, sip water, you know, when you need to. I think that'll be like a good transition to actually training with a backpack is, uh, you know, going with a, with a hydration pack for a while. But um, I think that's it. I think that's basically what's going on now. Like I say, you know, the hike went very well today. It was um, a note of, you know, a little bit warmer. Had about 10 degrees uh, warmer today than, uh, than uh, last week. And, um, you know, I'm only hiking one day a week. And, but um, that doesn't mean I'm only training one day a week, you know. There is a fair amount of uh, exercise to do at work. You know, I do six days of work now, and I'm trying to do as much as I can, six days of work. And, you know, there is some exercise involved in that. And also, I'm working on my Bowflex. Um, I think I'm, it's been pretty much about a year that I've been using the Bowflex. So there's about three, three days a week that I'm actually uh, using the bow flex, you know, working on my muscles. And I believe that's something else that's going to, you know, help me with the height. But uh, that's basically what it's, what's going on right now, and uh, I'll give you uh, another uh, update in the future. This is EC, and signing out for now.